All right, so diuretics, diuretics, um, real quick, diuretics in a nutshell. So we know that, sorry, I'm scratching my foot here. So we know that um, anytime we're talking about conductivity in the heart, talking about the rate at which the heart contracts, or if um, the heart's contracting too much, then we give a rate controller drug. That would be like your beta blocker, okay? Your calcium channel blocker. Those affect the electroexcitability. Diuretics don't do anything like that. Diuretics just decrease the workload, okay? So there's about four different types of classifications of diuretics. And there's some pertinent information that you should know about diuretics here. So, diureticos here, let's do it. So diuretics themselves, guys, let me put this on my chair here. So uh, when we were classifying the heart failure drugs, I did the A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, D for diuretics. A was for your ACE inhibitors, your angi receptor blockers, ARBs. B was for your beta blockers, your rate controllers, bring down the rate, also your electrical stimulations, for your uh, calcium channel blockers as well. Your diuretics just bring down the volume, just like your ACE inhibitors and your ARBs do. So. Diuretics. We're just diuresing. Diarrhea of the uh, of the kidneys and the bladder. Good night, Karina. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you're sitting in on the live webcam right now. So, diuretics. You have loop diuretics, furosemide, also known as Lasix. You have your thiazide diuretics, like your hydrochlorothiazide. You have your potassium sparing diuretics, also called your spironolactone or your aldactone. And you also have osmotic diuretics, like your mannitol. So if you ever give something in the hospital setting, just try to relate these suffixes, loop ending in mide here, furosemide. That is the most common loop diuretic. So if you don't know furosemide, you'll probably end up giving it a bunch of times in the hospital. Thiazide, Lasix, I'm sorry, thiazides, hydrochlorothiazide, they are um, they waste potassium inside the kidneys, but furosemide loop diuretics, they waste potassium like no other. They are loop diuretics are really the heavy guns, the big guns. If you want someone that's big and strong on your team, you pick furosemide. Furosemide is that loop diuretic. He is that Lasix. It's just fast acting and Oh, it just gets all that pee, or I'm sorry, all that fluid out of the vascular spaces into the potty and not the body. Thiazide is like second string. Thiazide is like the backup quarterback, okay? It's not first string. He's pretty good, but uh, not as good as, as uh, furosemide or our loop diuretic. For our potassium sparing diuretics, like tone, spironolactone, or aldosterone, sorry, spironolactone, or um, aldactone, these guys block aldosterone, okay? So aldosterone is that bouncer at the nightclub door of your kidneys. Um, if you've seen the uh, video uh, Club Raz, he's that bouncer that keeps sodium back in the kidneys. And we all know sodium attracts water. So once we block 
aldose tyrone sodium is able to leave the kidneys and water follows sodium so this is a potassium sparing medication so we don't have to educate your patient in terms of eating potassium like we do with loop diuretics and furosemide so with these guys your loop diuretics and your thiazides you're telling your patient eat spinach eat bananas eat a lot of fruits because you need to get potassium in your body because you're putting it all in the potty with these two guys um, your case sparing is a diuretic obviously that um, spares potassium for your osmotic mannitol is really almost a last line drug for diuretics um, furosemide is very very quick acting uh, os osmotic mannitol I don't think I've ever even given it in the hospital setting just because loop diuretics are so popular but osmotic also called for the generic name mannitol is another diuretic that you may give to decrease the volume and blood pressure inside the vascular systems so there's your diuretics in a nutshell let's go into the anti-infectives